Morning, T.C. You're late. Want to fire me? You'll have to pay me what you owe me first. When I do, consider yourself fired. How'd you make out last night? Did Rogers pay you? Some client. I wound up lending him a last fin. Then he insisted on buying me a drink. That's all I remember. How I got here, I'll never know. Oh, and from the way I feel this morning, it must have been fun. That could be a customer. Who oh, are you kidding? It's only the guy for the rent. Tell him I'm expecting a big check in the next mail. And something tells me the mails aren't coming through. Good morning. Good morning. Is Mr. Morgan in? Did you have an appointment? Well, no, but if he's in, I'll wait. May I have your name, please? Mrs. Swan. Oh. Think you can stand a shock? Break it to me gently. I'm still in delicate shape. Don't faint now, but it looks like a client. Sure it's not a bill collector? Don't think so. Okay, I'll take a chance. What have I got to lose? I'll see him in ten minutes. All right, I'll tell her. Her? And from the way she's dressed, it cost somebody a lot of dough. Better make it five minutes. She's got red hair. Well, what are you waiting for? Send her in. One of these days, I'll dye my hair. Swan. How do you do, Mrs. Swan? How do you do? Won't you sit down? Thank you. Now, what can I do for you? You were recommended to me by a friend as being a very discreet person, as well as an excellent private investigator. Oh, thank you very much. Would you mind telling me your friend's name? Mrs. Latimer. I believe you knew her when she was Mrs. Cromwell. Ah, yes. That was a long time ago. It was really a pleasure. How is she these days? She's fine. Would you care for a cup of coffee? No, thank you. You don't mind if I go ahead? Not at all. Now, what's your problem, Mrs. Swan? My husband. He's found another backyard? I don't know. Want me to find out? I want you to find out what it is he's keeping from me. It may not be another woman. In fact, I don't believe it is. He's not that sort of man. Well, neither are most men, until they're caught. You don't know Kenneth, Mr. Morgan. He's a fine, upright person. Physician, wonderful husband. We've always been very happy. We still are. But for quite a while now, I've had the feeling there was something in his life he was concealing. Well, if it isn't another woman, then... Maybe you're right. Perhaps it is. But whatever it is, I want to know. Mrs. Swan, you've hired yourself a bloodhound. My fee... With $100 in advance? That's my fee. $100 down. Thank you. Oh, yes. The key to my husband's office. I thought perhaps... It's a good idea. Make him in handy. You'll start soon? Immediately. And I'll hear from you? Indeed you will. Thank you. Thank you. Did you get the move? How much do I owe you? <laughs> You'll never see that much money. You take 50 on account? What's the other 50 for? Well, I've got expenses, too. Okay. Where are you going? To take care of the expenses. Hello? Yes, this is Dr. Swan speaking. Who is this, please? Oh, I see. Well, keep him resting quietly. I'll be there in a few minutes. What is it, dear? It's Vanderman. Another of his gastritis attacks. It sounded like a woman. Well, it was from his studio. It must have been his model. Which one? The blonde? 
darling, you know I never pay enough attention to be able to tell a blonde from a brunette. I'll be back soon. Good evening, Doctor. Good evening. Will you get me a number, please? Yes, sir. Lexington 1433. One, four, three, three. Thank you. Hello? This is Dr. Swan speaking. Is Miss Wood there? just lost a hundred bucks. Say, that's right. I guess I'll have to give her a refund. Still got your 50? Where's yours? Not for expenses. Last night? from the newspapers? Where were you last night when it happened? Well, I, I kept on his tail all day until he got home. Then after hanging around a while, I figured he was tucked in for the night. How was I to know he'd get a call and go out again? But that's what I paid you for, never to let him out of your sight. You've done just that. Kenneth might still... I'm sorry, Mrs. Swan. Believe me, I am. If there's anything I can do, I I'll return your money. That won't be necessary. There's still something you can do for me. Gladly. What is it? I want you to find my husband's murderer. Oh, but I can't do that, Mrs. Swan. You see, I have an agreement with the police. They never step on my toes, and I never step on theirs. This is strictly a police job. Why not leave it to them? Because I'm afraid. Of the murderer? I don't know why my husband was killed or by whom. But when the police found him, there was only one thing missing from his effects. What was it? His keys. And that was all? money, his watch. Everything else was untouched. Only the keys were missing. Well, have you any idea why? Was there anything special about them or any one of them? Not that I know of. But if the thing my husband was keeping from me had anything to do with his murder, and if it should turn out to be something that might reflect on his good name... You'd like to know before the police or the newspaper? Exactly. Excuse me. Yeah, it is. Who? Put him on. Hiya, Cap. How's everything down at the Homicide Squad? You boys need any help? Oh, we're struggling along, thanks. How are things with you? Uh-huh. Is Mrs. Swan still there? You ought to know. O'Brien looks awfully tired holding up that building across the street. Why don't you send him home? He needs the fresh air. What does she want? A good detective, Natch. She's in the wrong office. You ought to know better anyway. If you want to keep that pretty license, stick to divorce cases and leave murders to us. Tell her if she has any information to bring it to me. Tell her yourself. Who is that? Captain Fitzroy of the Homicide Squad. Did he know I was here? Yeah. If you notice someone following you, don't give it a thought. It's just routine. But why should they want to do that? Well, you're undoubtedly a suspect yourself. How could they dream that I... I was home last night when that call came, and I... 
I never left the house. Yeah, but even so, you could still be in on it. You know, there have been cases of women who found their husbands in the way. If that were so, why should I come to you? Set up a good defense, who knows? Could be a lot of reasons. Is that what you think? I don't think anything until I find out. I don't find anything until I get paid. Would $500... For $500, I can find out a lot of things. There'll be more if necessary. I'll do my best. Very well. I'll expect to hear from you when you have something to report. Vanderman? That's right. Will you close the door, please? Susie is allergic to drafts. I can understand that. I hope I'm not interrupting anything. Not at all. You don't mind if I go on with my work while we talk? Go right ahead. I'm not shy. Neither Susie. What is that? Paint? Oh, that's... That's Vanderman's servant. A cologne preparation. I was specially made to my order. Well, that way they're sure of at least one customer. <laughs> You said on the telephone that you were representing Mrs. Swan, is that right? That's right. The most attractive woman. I did a portrait of her. It's a pity this had to happen. I suppose she took it rather badly. She was in love with him, she says. I would be surprised if she were. And uh, vice versa? My dear fellow, I'm a painter, not a psychologist. Besides, Dr. Swan was merely my physician. Our relationship was purely professional. And your relationship with Mrs. Swan? Also professional. I'm afraid I won't be of much assistance to you. All I can tell you what I've been repeating since last night. Dr. Swan was murdered here. But how and why it should happen here, I have the slightest idea. When the police called to inform me, I was startled, to say the least. According to what he told Mrs. Swan, whoever called him last night said she was your model. Couldn't have been Susie. Couldn't have been. Susie was with me at the Princess Theatre. What's playing there? Miss Paris Wood in Time and Tide. Fortunately, I still have my ticket stubs. What time's the show over? 11.10. And as the police pointed out, Dr. Swan was murdered around 11.40, which was just about the time I was taking Susie home, without witnesses. What did the police say to that? They said... That'll be all, Mr. Vanderman. Thank you, and good day. You took the words right out of my mouth. Good day, Mr. Vanderman. Good day. So long, Susie. See you on my calendar. That'll be all, Susie. Thank you. What you want? Who are you? I was about to ask you the same question. I'm Miss Phillips, Dr. Swan's receptionist. What do you mean by breaking in here? Break in nothing. Why well, strain myself when I have a key? Where did you get that? From Mrs. Swan. Are you a detective? I've been called worse names. Would you mind telling me what you were looking for? I wasn't looking for anything. I just came in to straighten things out before the police came. Why, is there something there they shouldn't see? Of course not. What made you think that? I just thought there might be something in the files. These are only the doctor's records. Were you with him long? Six years and three months. Long enough. You probably knew him better than his wife. I should think so. Long enough to know if there might be somebody who'd want to kill him. I can't think of anyone who'd want to kill him. Well, but somebody did. What kind of a man was he? How do you get on with people? Do you have any enemies? What kind of a guy was he with the women? He was not like that at all. He was the finest man I ever knew. It's inconceivable to think that anyone would even want to hurt him while he was kind and generous and sensitive. And you loved him. I respected and admired him very much. Everyone loved him. Including his wife? 
Well, she didn't appreciate him. Why, she's a selfish, calculating woman who simply married him. I suppose I shouldn't have said that. You're right. I'm jealous. You never even suspected how I felt. I'm sorry. It's been kind of rough. It's over now for him. And me. And you've no idea? Believe me, if I did, I wouldn't have to discuss it with you or anybody else. I'm sure I'd know what to do myself. Well, if anything occurs to you, give me a ring. We'll talk it over first, and then you can do what you want. All right, Mr. Morgan. Perhaps I will. Drop in anyway, if I'm not there. You're like my secretary. She's a lot like you. Pretty small gal. Change for nickel, bud? I beg your pardon? Oh, never mind. Is Mrs. Swan in? Oh, she's out. Sure? I'm positive. She left here at uh, precisely 12.33. I have it written down right here. How do I know that's right? Are you doubting my veracity? Oh, well, just your eyesight. Okay, well, then, here. See for yourself. 12.33, that's what it says here, all right. Say, hey, this is quite a record you keep. Telephone numbers, who people call, who in. If that doesn't concern you, would you please mind your own business? All right, I will. Mind if I use your phone? Uh, why, it's a free country. <laughs> no, no, no. Not that one. The booth. What number did you want? Lexington 1433. That'll be 10 cents. That's inflation for you. I used to get by with a slug. Petunia, who's this? Petunia, how are you? What are you doing? Where are you? Where am I? I'm in Miss Wood's dressing room at the Princess Theater. That's where I am. Where else would I be? Now, look here, Mr. Man. I ain't got all day to stand here and swap jokes. We got a matinee to get ready for. Once and for all, who is this? Well, this is Mr. Morgan. Morgan? What Morgan? Who is it, Patty? It's the Mr. Morgan. What Morgan? That's what I asked him. Well, ask him again. What, Morgan? Lawrence D. Morgan of the Cape Town Bugle. I'd like an interview with Miss Wood for my paper. He says he's Lawrence D. Morgan and he works for a bugle. A bugle? Yes, I'm a paper. Oh, a newspaper man, of course. Well, does he want to see me? Yes, I'm. Tell him to drop in this afternoon if he has time. Drop in. Where's Miss Wood's dressing room? That one over there. Who's that? Mr. Morgan of the Bugle. Come in. Hmm. Hello, Petunia. You look just as I pictured you over the phone. Likewise. Miss Wood ain't here. She's on stage. She'll be back in a moment. How's the show going? Well, she's in it, ain't she? Seem rather well, don't you, Jeff? For a matinee audience, they're very responsive. Hello. Oh, Mr. Morgan. Morgan. I'm sorry, I haven't much time. Won't you sit down? I have to go on again in a few minutes, and I have to change. So, if you start with you, will they talk across the screen? You won't bother me a bit. Uh, Jeff, this is Mr. Morgan. He's a newspaper man. How do you do? This is Jeffrey Regan, my producer and fiance. Congratulations. Thank you. I suppose you know the facts of my life, how I began, what I've done, my hopes, dreams, ambitions. Heaven knows I keep nothing from my public. But is there anything special you'd like to know? Yes, Miss Wood, there is one thing. And what's that? The exact telephone conversation you had with Dr. Swan last night at 11.32. Who are you, private investigator? Since Miss Wood was probably the last person to talk to Dr. Swan before he was killed, I think that telephone conversation might be very interesting. I don't see how that concerns you, Morgan. Well, she says she doesn't keep anything from her public. And that includes me, and the newspapers, and the police. Say, what is this? Blackmail? I never was very good at that. All I want is information. I think you'd better get out. 
Just a minute, Jess. I have nothing to hide, really. Dr. Swan was my physician. I wasn't feeling very well yesterday, and he prescribed medicine and treatment. He called me last night to inquire about my condition. How was it? Better. And that's all there was to the conversation? Yes. Does that satisfy your curiosity, Mr. Morgan? For the time being, yes. But if I get curious, why, well, I'll drop in again. Who knows, I might even buy a ticket to the show. I have a hunch it might be worth it. No, he's not here. I have no idea. Yes, I'll tell him when he comes in. Hi, any developments? A few calls, nothing important. Word must have got around that you're flush again. Oh, how do you like that? It's getting so a man can't enjoy his own money. Oh, hello there. Hello, Mr. Morgan. May I see you for a moment alone? You certainly can. Oh, Miss Nelson, say how do you do to Miss Phillips? How do you do? Won't you step into my parlor? Sit down. Now, what do you want to see me about? Since we talked, I remembered something that happened yesterday. Oh, it probably doesn't have any bearing on the doctor's murder, but... Well, it did seem odd to me at the time. I... Go on. It happened in the morning after the doctor arrived and had gone into his office. In a few seconds, he came out looking very agitated and upset. Did you lose something, doctor? Yes, I... What is it? Can I help you? A key. A key? Are you sure you lost it here? Yes, I had it in my hand just a moment ago. Here it is. Let me have it. Is something wrong, doctor? No. No, of course not. It may not be important, but his manner was strange. Not at all like him. Well, what kind of a key was it? Did you recognize it? Yes, it, it was a key to a public locker. The kind you rent for a dime to check parcels and things. Oh. It had a number on it. Remember what it was? No, I'm afraid I don't. Diz, give me the redhead. Yeah, well, how many redheads are there in my life at the moment? Yeah, Mrs. Swan. Yes? Oh, hello, Mr. Markin. Key? What sort of a key? Yes, I remember seeing a key like that in my husband's desk. Just a moment, please. Hello? Yes, the key's still here. Hang on to it. I'll be right over. She has the key? Yeah. Mr. Morgan, please be careful. I don't trust that woman. Still yelling. Perhaps you're right, but if the key should lead to anything... I'll let you know. When she didn't answer the phone, I knew there was something wrong. Oh, brother, what a head. Hey, wait a minute. What happened? You mugs gang up on me or what? Somebody else beat us to it. Okay, Morgan, it's your nickel. Start talking. Well, what do you want me to start? With your entrance through that door. Well, that's just about where it ended. I walked in and it's like out. Somebody must have sapped me with a shillelagh. You were sapped, all right. But before or after? Before or after what? That. 
In the bedroom. Good. So they clipped the redhead. They? But just a figure of speech, Captain. I've no more idea of what happened than you, probably less. She may have been dead when I got here, and maybe not. What were you doing here, anyway? Well, the lady's my client. She was. I just came up to see her on business. How'd you get in? I walked in. Well, I didn't see you, and you couldn't get in without going past me. Oh, but I did. I know you had a tail out in front, Captain, so I went around to the back entrance. When I got up here, nobody answered the door. I tried it. It was over. And? And from there on, brother, your story's as good as mine. What are you looking for? Did you find a key on her? What key? Well, that's what I came up here for. I talked to her on the phone a few minutes ago. She had it then. Now she's dead and the key's gone. If you ask me, she was killed for that key and so was her husband. What key are you talking about? Key to what? To a public locker. Well, what about it? I don't know. I don't even know what's in it. But I have a hunch that's what the shooting's all about. Now, all you have to do is to get to that locker before the murderer. And then Captain Fitzroy does it again. Simple, isn't it? All I have to do is go through about 20,000 lockers in railway stations, bus terminals, and all over the place. And by the time I get to the right one, the murderer who has the key has beat me to it. Well, that's the best I can do for you at the moment. You're a great help. Anytime I need a divorce, I'll keep you in mind. Well, what do you want me to do? Solve the case for you? Murder's your racket, remember? Where are you going? I'll have to solve your case for you. Washing off the blood? Oh, I'm alive all right. You didn't hit me hard enough. You did a much better job on Mrs. Swan. What are you talking about? My aching skull. Oh, so this is what did it. No wonder I got a lump the size of Pike's Peak on my head. Why'd you kill her? You're talking nothing. Police may not think so. What did you tell them? Nothing yet. What are you going to tell them? Depends on what you tell me. Suppose I say I don't know what you're talking about. Suppose I say Vandeman number seven. Next time you decide to hit somebody over the head, you better change your cologne. It gives you away. That doesn't prove anything. Doesn't it? We'll see. Wait a minute. I didn't kill her. Who did? I don't know. When I arrived, she was dead. What were you doing there? I wanted to talk to her. There was something that happened on Monday that I did not tell the police, although it may have some bearing on Dr. Swan's death. What was it? On Monday afternoon, I had an appointment at Dr. Swan's office. Good afternoon. Hello, Mr. Vanderman. Doctor has someone with him, but he should be through in a few minutes. I'll get down to the lab and see if your x-rays are ready. Thank you. Must be insane, Laurie. Do you know him? He's an aircraft designer, one of the top men I hear. I'm doing a portrait of his wife. Oh, what's she like? Why do you ask? Well, it so happens that up until this moment, I never so much as heard of this man, Loring, or his wife. And this afternoon, out of a clear sky, he comes here and accuses me of carrying on with her. I don't understand it. I don't either. It doesn't sound like him. Oh, he even threatened to kill me or some such nonsense. Not that I intend to lose any sleep over it. It's all too silly. Well, come on in. We'll see how good a chance you have of surviving. All right, Doctor. This happened Monday afternoon. Yes. And the next day, Dr. Swan is killed. How come he never told it to the police? I wanted to discuss with Mrs. Swan first. So I went up to her apartment and found she was dead. How'd you get by the clerk downstairs? I live in the same building, on the floor below. Oh, so you just walked in by yourself, and there she was. Before I had a chance to recover from the shock, you came in. And realizing how it would look if I were discovered there, I, uh... So that's your story? Yes. Well, I hope you do a better job convincing the police. Good luck, brother. You'll need it. You don't believe me? 
Oh, sure, I believe you. But I even believe in Santa Claus. It might work. But I'm afraid of supersonic speeds are wing up this flight. Yeah. Can I see you alone for a minute? Make an appointment with my secretary. It's about your wife. I'll use your room for a moment, Doug. Go ahead. What about my wife? You know Dr. Swan? Why? In case you haven't read the newspapers, he was killed last night. This afternoon, so was his wife. What does that have to do with me? That's what I'm here to find out. If this is some sort of a joke, I think you'd better go. Unless you'd rather be thrown out. I'd rather talk about your visit to Dr. Swan. Or would you rather talk about it to the police? What visit? Monday afternoon, the day before he was killed. What about it? He had a quarrel. When you left his office, he looked mad enough to kill him. Did I? Where were you? Hiding under a chair? No, I wasn't. Peter Vanderman was. All right. I did quarrel with Dr. Swan. I didn't like his seeing my wife. That doesn't prove I killed him. Am I to a jury? Nonsense. I lost my temper and flew off the handle. As soon as I had a chance to cool off, I decided I'd probably exaggerated the whole thing. I never saw him again. Not even last night? There around midnight? What's your interest in this case? I'm a private investigator. I was working for Mrs. Swan. Was? Who are you working for now? Myself. I collected $600 from her. I only worked a couple of days. I still owe her a few hundred dollars worth of investigation. Why not quit and call it a profit? I don't work that way. Oh. Perhaps you're holding out for more profit. I don't work that way either. For your information, my angle is simply this. I was hired by Mrs. Swan to tail her husband. He gets killed. Then she kicks in with more dough to keep me on the case. She gets killed. I don't like it. Makes me look bad. Not only that, it makes me feel bad. So the only thing I can do to square myself and the swans is to find the character that did it. Save the police a lot of trouble. That sounds very noble. Too bad I can't help you. Maybe you can, Mr. Loring. Don't give up just yet. Here. Take it over and give me a ring. I'm always open to new ideas. Mrs. Loring. Where did you get that key? Mr. Loring gave me specific instructions that you were not to have access to this cabinet. My key, please, madame. Or shall I phone Mr. Loring? Thank you. I'll see who that is. My name's Morgan. Will you tell Miss Loring I'm here? Will you wait here, please? There's a gentleman here to see you, madame. His name is Morgan. Do you wish to see him? Very well. I'll show him in. Loring? My name is Morgan. I know. What do you want? Well, I... I'd like to have a little chat with you. I'm sorry, but I'm sure there's nothing... How would you like to drink, Mr. Uh... Morgan. Yes, yes, I would. Wing, Mr. Morgan would like a drink. Scotch and soda? Uh, plain water and very little. No ice. And the same for me. It, it was so nice of you to drop in. Oh, won't you sit down, Mr. Morgan? Come sit here by me. Thank you. I haven't been well lately, and I've been confined to the house. You've no idea how lonesome it gets, cooped up all day, all alone. 
Except for Wing, of course. But he doesn't count. He's not much company. I, I guess he's just antisocial. Thank you, Wing. Will that be all, madame? For the present. The gangway. Bon voyage. Scotch are wonderful people. Imagine them inventing this marvelous drink all by themselves. I'm part Scotch myself. Are you? I knew there was something about you the minute you walked in. You remind me a little of my husband when I first met him. But let's not go into that. Oh, what do you do? Oh, nothing much. I just just around, talk to people, who to drink now and then. Oh, it sounds perfect. I envy you. I used to do that. Did you? What stopped you? My husband. Sounds narrow-minded. Oh, it's not that. He's the jealous type. He's always afraid I'll get mixed up with another man. A man by the name of Swan? How did you know? I just guessed it. Is that why I killed him? Who killed who? Your husband, Dr. Swan. Dr. Swan killed? Yes. Don't you read the papers? He was murdered last night. <laughs> did I say something funny? You certainly did. Well, that's the wrong Dr. Swan. Oh. You mean there are two Dr. Swans? Apparently. When I met at the key, didn't look anything like... Where did you say you met him? At the bar of the key club. You know how it is. It gets sort of lonely drinking alone. Steve thinks I drink too much. That's why he won't let me out of the house. Wing is practically my jailer. You know, he spies on me. I wouldn't be surprised if he were the one that told Steve about my meeting Dr. Swan. Steve was simply furious. He said he'd kill him. Now, wait a minute. Are you trying to tell me you met a character at the key club who calls himself Dr. Swan? Your husband gets jealous and... Goes out and kills a, another Dr. Swan, the wrong one. Well, after all, the mistake was perfectly natural. All Steve had to go by was the name. And when he looked it up in the phone book, there was only one Dr. Swan listed. And he figured he was the one and went out and killed him. Oh, I didn't say that. No. What did you say? All I said was, Steve picked the wrong Dr. Swan. But all he did was threaten him. Steve wouldn't hurt a fly. Oh. What was your husband last night? Working late at the office. How late? Until after midnight. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if Dr. Swan were in his right name. Who? The chap I met at the bar. He might have made it up as a gag on the spur of the moment. People are always doing that at bars. I do it myself. Yeah. So do I. Well, thanks for the drink, Mrs. Loring. You're not going. Stay and have another. Oh, save it for next time. I may drop in again. And if Wing won't cooperate, I'll bring my own. Wing. Wing. Yes, madame? No, madame. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, key, please. Mr. Smiley, are you locked out? Very funny. Have you got a key? Oh, uh, well, you see, I... Uh... Look, chum, this is a private club for members only. If you haven't got in. Come on, I'll get moving your box. Now, oh, wait a minute before you start shoving anybody around. Hold it, if you please. I beg your pardon. Thank you. Say, 
where'd you get that key? Don't tell me you're a member. Not exactly, but I get around. I do have a life of my own, you know. You do? Since when? Good evening, madam. How are you this evening? Fine, thank you. Do you wish a table, or do you prefer the bar? A table, please. Yes, ma'am. Just two Berman highballs. Yes, sir. Don't we get to eat? What, at these prices? Save it. I'll buy you a hot dog later. Well, what do you know? We've got company. Hello, Morgan. Hiya, Rocky. When did you join the club? Well, I haven't made up my mind yet. I'm just casing the joint. How did you get in? Through the keyhole. I've lost weight, haven't you noticed? You here on business or for laughs? I'm looking for a friend of mine, a uh, Dr. Swan. I understand he drops in here occasionally. You mean the guy that got bumped? He was never here in his life. I'm told there's another one, uh, and he does hang around here. Somebody's giving you the rib. The only swan I ever saw was in a lake. If you want to stick around for a drink, okay. Otherwise, so long. Oh, by the way, Rocky, how long has uh, Jeffrey Regan been a member? Here are your drinks. If you quit beating your gums, you might get to finish them. He'd make a great character for Dick Tracy. You know what I think? Well, what do you know? More company. I'm beginning to think you weren't going to show up. I had trouble getting away. So that's Mrs. Loring. Yeah. And there's a parlay I didn't figure on. Does Steve know you're here? No, he was out. But Wing was there. I had to slip away. Did you get it? No, I couldn't. But Jeff, I told you. Well, I'm sorry. You didn't give me much time, you know. What do you expect me to do? Work miracles? I wouldn't ask you if I were in desperate. You'll just have to get it for me. Tonight. Tonight? Oh, don't be silly. You'd better try something else. I can't do a thing. You mean you're going to let me down? After all I've done for you. Uh, your key, please. Key? Oh, key, uh, I'm afraid I mislaid Well, I'm sorry, sir, but uh, you know the rules. Mission by key only. Well, suppose I buy one. Well, I don't know, sir. Well, there's nothing in the rules against uh, my lending you mine. What do you think it is, a lover's quarrel? Well, if it is, that boy must have a bicycle. With Paris Wood and, uh-oh, or company. I think the party's about to break up. Excuse me, kids. What are you doing here? Now, wait a minute, Steve. Come on. You don't understand. Get out of my way. You all right, Mr. Regan? Yeah, sure. Just come to my office. We'll uh, straighten you out a little. Nice night for a ride. Save it. Is 
Sit down. All right, Mr. Morgan. You were so anxious to talk, now's your chance. What do we talk about? Keys. Or rather, one particular key. The one you took from Mrs. Swan. Well, you've searched me, you know I haven't got it. <laughs> Mr. Morgan. Why must you be so stubborn? What's it going to get you? From where I sit, a broken arm. Exactly. Now, what do you want with a broken arm? It's very inconvenient. You read the papers. What I told the police is the truth. Whoever killed Mrs. Swan has that key. We're not as gullible as the police, Mr. Morgan. Now, what have you done with it? I've told you all I know. You like music? Since you're not inclined to talk, perhaps you'd like to sing. In case you forget the words, Roger will prompt you. No. Oh. Why not be reasonable, Mr. Morgan? Roger can fracture every bone in your body without even exerting himself. Oh. And if you persist in your oh. attitude, he will. But what's the percentage for you in that? It's just as easy oh. and a great deal smarter for you to save yourself a lot of broken bones and Roger here the trouble of breaking them. Now, isn't that intelligent reasoning? No! This music's getting a little tiresome, don't you think? You're not being very attentive. The last time, what have you done with that key? Roger, I'm afraid you've been too gentle with Mr. Morgan. Hey, wait! You big sack, why did you do that? Can I have it if he ain't got no stamina? He don't live right. Can I bring him to and work him over again? No, I don't know. Personally, I'm bored of the whole thing. We're wasting our time. Finish him now? No. Wait, I want to make a phone call. Be sure there's no kickback. When a man pays for a job, he's entitled to the final word. Sure use one. Hop in. Have an accident? Sort of. Nice of you to pick me up. I was just returning the compliment. You made a nice try yourself earlier this evening. Yeah, <laughs> but I didn't get very far, did I? Well, you were interrupted. So I was. By the way, my name is Morgan. Larry, for short. Mine's Heidi. On your way home? Mm-hmm. I don't live very far from here. Would you care to come by and clean up a bit? Thanks. I might even buy you a drink. Well, thanks again. What kind of an accident was it? Oh, I just ran into a couple of guys. What happened to them? I didn't stick around long enough to find out. You mean you just hit and ran? Well, it's sort of the other way around. They hit and I ran. Lucky for me that you happen to be passing by. 
Hey, uh, what were you doing? You following me? Of course. After having met you, I just couldn't let you get away. Well, now that you've caught up with me, what gives? Haven't you any ideas? Yeah, a couple. Let's have a drink and talk some more. Why not? Anything you've got. That stuff you're going to get. You asked for it, here it is. What is it? You'll find out after you drink it. Something special. Sounds interesting. Cigarette? Please. Here we go again. We're always being interrupted by a telephone. There must be something about us that brings out the worst in a phone. Hello? Yes? No, I can't. Why don't you do that? All right. Bye. Anything important? Not especially. Have you, uh, had any good books lately? No, have you? I never read. What do you do? You do all right. Not bad yourself. Say, this is awfully smooth. Doesn't have any kick. That comes later. Have to wait very long? Not long. Well, I'm in no hurry. take long. Now, if you don't mind, I think I'll borrow your car. Or Huntley G. Harlow's. Dr. Harlow? Yes? Can I see you for a minute? It's rather late. Can't it wait until morning? I'm afraid not. All right, then. Come in. Now then, Mr. Livesey. Charles T. Livesey. Well, then, Mr. Livesey, what can I do for you? I haven't been sleeping well lately. I, I'm having bad dreams. Mm -hmm. What sort of dreams? What are they about? Oh, all sorts of things. People getting killed. Other people taking me for a ride, beating me up, trying to kill me. And then when I get away, somebody else picks me up and tries to dope me. Is there any reason for this in your dream? Oh, yes. They're after something I'm supposed to have. Perhaps you'd better sit down here. We'll go into this in more detail. That's right. Just relax. Relax completely. How long have you been having these dreams? Just recently. How'd they begin? Well, it all started with a red-headed chick coming to me with a problem about her husband. But before I could do anything about it, her husband gets killed. So you're attracted to this redhead in your dreams? Well, I'm attracted to all redheads, dreaming or awake. Okay. This fixation accounts for your jealousy of the husband and wanting him out of the way. But I didn't kill him. No. Who did? Somebody who was after something uh, he had. Do you know what it was? A key. A 
the key to a public locker? Yes. How'd you guess? <laughs> Quite a common dream symbol. A locker representing frustrated desires, hidden secrets. And the key? The key obviously means the fulfillment of those desires, bringing the secrets into the open. You desired this redhead, but she was not attainable so long as she was married. Hence the symbol of the locker in which the desirable was hidden. The key to this locker being, of course, her husband's death. If somebody else killed her husband, does that mean that he was after the redhead and the key? Is that what happened in your dream? Only the redhead is killed and for the same key. How do you explain that? You mean someone else killed the redhead and took the key? Oh, not only that. Suddenly a bunch of other characters come along who think I have the key and start beating me up trying to get it from me. Strange you've had such a dream. By a curious coincidence, I... I have another patient who's been dreaming he's... after just such a key. Has used those same means you described to obtain it. Well, that's funny. What is your patient's name? <laughs> and of course, I'm not at liberty to reveal. But in his latest dream, he decided that since he was unable to acquire the key by murder, theft, or force, he might try purchasing it. How do you make out? He's not had an opportunity until just now to approach the possessor of the key. What do you think he'll offer for it? Whatever the key is worth to him. In your dream, for example, if you were asked to sell the key, how much would you want for it? Ten thousand dollars offhand. Isn't that a rather inflated value for a key? Not for a key to hidden desires. A key like that is priceless. Nothing's priceless. Everything has its price. Even human life. Is that how your patient feels about it? Excuse me for a moment. I'm Dr. Harlow. Oh, yes. Is Mrs. Loring in? Yes, sir, but I'm afraid she can't be disturbed. Is Mr. Loring in? No, sir, he's out. When do you expect him? I couldn't say, sir. Uh, I believe I'll wait. Hello. Yes, this is me again. Has Mr. Morton come in yet? Yes, have him call me as soon as he comes in. I'll be at the office. Thanks. Goodbye. Hiya, dears. Miss me? Well, where have you been? I hope you've had fun. What are you trying to do, give me ulcers? And next time you walk out of me, at least say goodbye. Well, it all happened so fast I didn't have a chance. Sudden impulse, you might say. Did you get stuck with the check? Not only that, it cost me a quarter to get your hat out of huck. Well, you'll have to admit I was a good company. Speaking of company, we got some. Yeah? Who? Mr. Loring. Well, what do you know? Everything comes to him who sticks his chin out. Sometimes she pulls the shade. Eh? Oh. Evening, Mr. Loring. Nice of you to drop in. I was just thinking about you. Quite a coincidence. I was thinking about you. Must be psychic. Hope you don't mind my dropping in at this hour. I have some business to discuss. My favorite topic. Sit down. Thank you. Cigarette? No, thank you. I carry my own poison. That makes it convenient. 
Whenever you decide to commit suicide or a murder or two, of course, when it comes to murder, it's much less messy to let somebody else do the dirty work. Let's get to the point. I didn't come here to discuss the fine art of murder. Hmm, you disappoint me. What did you come here to discuss? My wife. Charming topic. What about her? Well, you were at the key club this evening. I suppose you saw what happened. You mean that uh, waltz you had with Regan? Say, what was that all about? I understand you called at my house this afternoon. Spoke to my wife. You were wasting your time. Mrs. Loring and I have no possible connection with the Swan murder. But during your conversation, I'm certain that she gave you, as she usually does, a picture of me as a very jealous man. Are you? Well, if I am, it's not without cause. I understand her first husband found himself in the same difficulty. Her first husband? Jeffrey Regan. You mean she was married to that character? Oh, no. That's Jeffrey Regan the third. Her first husband's nephew. Well, what happened to the first? He died. Oh. And then you married his widow. Uh, how'd you happen to meet her? As a matter of fact, I knew her before his death. He was my employer. After he died, Mrs. Loring inherited the business. And then, six months later... You inherited both. Well, that's away from the subject. What I was trying to say is that my, uh, so-called jealousy is simply the outcome of, uh, my wife's tendency to involve herself in, shall we say, unfortunate relationships. I see. This where do I fit into this picture? You're a private detective. I'd like to engage your services. What do you want me to do? Follow her around, get the goods on her? Object? Divorce? Not at all. You see my wife? Well, I suppose you've discovered her weakness. It's because of this weakness, she's not always entirely responsible for her actions. So if possible, I'd like to protect her, so to speak, against herself against herself and anybody else that might come along, including the police and her husband? I don't like your attitude. In fact, I don't know why I ever thought that... Did you ever think of trying Doc Harlow? What do you know about Harlow? Nothing much. Except that he's pretty good on hallucinations. He asked my diagnosis. That's exactly what you're suffering from, or as he already told you. I don't know where you got your information, but you're slightly off. You see, it's Mrs. Loring who's his patient. You can't go in there. Hiya, Morgan. Hi, Mr. Loring. Yes? I tried to tell him you were busy, but the big lug just flashed his badge and breezed by. I'll have to ask you to come with me, Mr. Loring. Where? Where do you want me? To your house. Somebody's been murdered. Who? A man by the name of Huntley Harlow. Whoever used this poker either wiped off his fingerprints or used gloves. Mr. Loring? Yes. I'm Captain Fitzroy of the Homicide Squad. I suppose you just passed the body in the hall. What happened? That's what I hope to find out. Hello, Morgan. Hiya, Cap. Horning in again? What are you trying to do? Go into competition with the police? I'm just an innocent bystander. Can I help it if every time I get a client, people start getting killed? Is Mr. Loring your client? I'm just asking. Well, yes. What did you hire him for? I believe any transaction between a private detective and his client is considered under the law to be a privileged competence. Isn't that so? It is. But it doesn't stop me from asking how long you were there. And that goes for both of you. I'm always glad to oblige, Cap. Uh, what time do we need an alibi for? 11.30, huh? That's just the time I arrived in Mr. Morgan's office. Is that right? Well, if Mr. Loring says so, he has a much better sense of time than I have. How well did you know Dr. Harlow? Not very well. I heard he was rather successful in treating certain conditions. I sent Mrs. Loring to him. Did you know he had served a prison term for blackmail and that his right name was Hackett? No, I did not. He was no more a doctor than I am. What was he doing here tonight, anyway? Were you expecting him? I wasn't. In fact, I had no idea. Did he say he had an appointment? No, sir. 
He just asked for you. And when I told him you were out, he said he'd wait. So I brought him in here. Where were you, Margaret, when Dr. Harlow arrived? I was upstairs in my room. I was indisposed. I'd asked Wing not to disturb me. So you didn't see him at all? Not till Wing called me, after he found him. I see. After I brought Dr. Harlow in here, I went to my room and listened to the radio for about 30 minutes. Then I returned to see if... And that's when I found him. I called Mrs. Loring, and then the police. You heard nothing? Let no one else in? No, sir. What's your theory, Cap? What's yours? Well, I have a beautiful theory. It all works out but one thing. What's that? I can't prove it. Well, it's way past my bedtime, so if you don't need... I don't. Oh. Well, good night, all. Hiya, dear. What happened? Did they arrest Loring? I didn't stick around long enough to find out, honey. Stopped off the depot and invested a dime. Say, did you know you could only rent one of those public lockers for 24 hours at a time? If you want it longer, you have to put in another dime. What if you don't? Well, then the company opens the box, takes out what's in it, change the lock so they can rent it again. Well, what happens to your property? Oh, they keep it till somebody comes along with a key and identifies it. Who are you calling? Mrs. Phillips, I just wanted to nurse. Don't tell me she did it. She was in love with her boss. Why would she want to kill him? I can understand why she might want to kill his wife, but... Hello, Miss Phillips. This is Morgan. Well, I'm getting warm, but I need some help. Do you know the Lorings? No. No, not Mr. Loring. But Mrs. Loring and her first husband were patients of the doctor's. As a matter of fact, Dr. Swan attended Mr. Regan during his last illness. Mm, I see. Well, thanks very much. I'll call you tomorrow. Good night. Who are you calling now? Mrs. Loring. You don't think she knows anything? She's been in a Scotch mist for years. Hello, Mrs. Loring. This is Morgan. Can you talk? Wait a minute. Yes, I think so. What is it? Well, I, I'd like to see you without your husband knowing it. Can you come down to the office? Well, I don't know. Can't you come here? I'm afraid not. You see, it's about your husband. Well, I'll see what I can do. How long will you be there? I'll make it as soon as I can, Mr. Morgan. Mr. Morgan. Oh, hello, Mrs. Loring. Did you get away all right? Yes. Steve went out and Wing is in bed. Where'd your husband go? He didn't say. Sit down. Care for a drink? I don't mind, if you do. Water? Why spoil it? Here you are. What's the gangway? Bon voyage. By the way, did you ever see this before? I don't believe so. Why? Oh, it's just something I picked up. You know, I can't for the life of me understand what you ever saw in a stuffed shirt like Steve Loring. Why do you say that? Well, he just doesn't seem your type. But he doesn't understand you. No, that's true. He doesn't. Your first husband, did he understand you? Yes, I think so. Of course, he was old. Older than Steve? Much. He was nice, though. Very generous. Generous in his will, too, wasn't he? He left me everything. How about his nephew? The Wonder Boy producer. Didn't he cut in? Jeff? Oh, no. No, he didn't get a thing. He's doing all right now, though, isn't he? Yes, I put money in his show. Now he's a big producer. The ungrateful brat. Getting back to Steve. Did you have any money before you married him? A little. 
Well, uh, your first husband dying was a pretty good break for him, wasn't it? It certainly was. Well, he walked into a perfect setup, took over the business and all. What did I get out of it? Nothing but money. Money? <laughs> That's a laugh. I thought you said you got it all. Or did little Steve cut in on that, too? What are you getting at? I'll tell you just as soon as you tell me what your first husband died of. He died of an apoplectic stroke. Ah. That's what it said on the death certificate. Dr. Swan knew better. I don't understand It was you. poisoned. Dr. Swan knew it. But Dr. Swan knew it. Why did he... Blackmail. Your first husband had a lot of dough, and Dr. Swan knew it. He wanted in on it. So he signed the death certificate, blackmailed the murderer. You mean Steve? You want me to spell it out for you? I should have guessed it. It wasn't me Steve was after. He was ambitious. And he knew I'd inherit everything. That's why he wouldn't let me divorce Jeffrey while he was alive. Wait, he said. He's an old man. All we have to do is wait and let nature take its course. Yes, I see it now. Steve must have done it. But why kill Dr. Swan? Well, people get tired of paying blackmail eventually. One way out is to eliminate the blackmail and the other. Which in this case happened to be stashed in the public locker. Dr. Swan gets a call in the middle of the night. It was you on the phone making like Vanderman's model. Yes, Steve made me call. He wouldn't explain why. When I learned in the morning what had happened, he admitted it. But he said if the police found out about it, I'd be in it as deep as he was. That's why I lied when you came and asked me about Dr. Swan. Steve called me from his office after you left. He told me what to say. Did he tell you why Mr. Swan was killed or Dr. Harlow? No, he didn't. Do you know? Yeah, I believe I do. Mrs. Swan was killed for the key, of course. And Dr. Harlow? Well, when he got wind of what was going on, he wanted in on it. But instead of collecting any blackmail, all he did was get himself killed. By Steve. No, my dear, by you. Since you're feeling so talkative, why not tell the truth? I spoke to young Regan a few moments ago, and he told me she tried to borrow money very desperately. That's probably why she killed Harlow. Ran out of money. Couldn't pay him off. She was afraid to come to me. She thought I'd connect her with Dr. Swan's murder. That's not true. You're lying. You're making it all up to save yourself. You can't prove it. Can't I? Wing just gave me this. He found it in your room. It's probably the key to the locker where Dr. It's Swan... It's not. It's the wrong key. It didn't work when I... Of course it didn't. They'd already changed the lock. The 24 hours were up, but the evidence is still there. And I'm sure it'll prove that your husband's telling the truth. Haven't you killed enough people for that key? I don't want it. It's no good to me now. Nothing is. I'll take that, Mrs. Loring, before anybody gets hurt. Well, if it isn't the Marine, disguised as police, Captain Fitzroy does it again. All right, dears, you can come out now. You can wrap it up, Captain. I've got it all here, the whole thing. So have I, in the form of a little statement by Dr. Swan. That was a good tip, pal. I checked with the locker company, and here it is. I think you'd better come along with us, Mr. Loring. We'll need your testimony. Very well. After you, my dear. By the way, if you ever want to drop your little friend, Heidi, a line, she's got a new address. We just picked her up with a couple of playmates at Harlow's place. Don't worry about it, though. Not at least for another uh, ten years. Well, thanks, Tom. You saved me a lot of trouble. Next time you want to leave this handy for a murderer, make sure it isn't loaded. You don't think I'd be stupid enough to give her a loaded gun, do you? <laughs> Thank you.